You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash newoldheads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, for Infinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash newoldheads. You are now tuned in to the New Old Heads podcast. I am Major Seven. The brothers are in the building as we prepare for all-star weekend festivities here in the good old city of Indianapolis. My man Jay Moore repping the Pacers. How are you, sir? Doing well, doing well. You know, decided to, um, I had this one on ice for a minute, you know, so I figured this uh, this week's show would be the perfect time to debut my, my Pacers warm-up. Minus the warm up pants, but no, no, we're not. Know. Look, if you want them dudes that does that, then you're doing too much. I mean, I understand being a just fan of the, basketball, just for the culture, you brother. Are, that's no, all. no, that's that's for the for the cultural people who need to get it together. Oh, got it. I don't know. You're talking to somebody who wears sweatpants every day, so oh no, I, I'm not against that. Is my life the warm up pants? <laughs> that is my like, life. When you wear the full, I, it's just like somebody going out and wearing the full basketball uniform. Yeah, just know, route. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we don't do that. We're gonna go play today and do some pickup games and. Yeah, even if you I'll be playing, Jalen Rose today. No, you no, won't. No, see, you look, won't. I, I remember. There was, I remember seeing this guy on the court. Like he had on I'm the full, like he had on the Jordan jersey, mm -hmm. but you could tell it was like a champion jersey. <laughs> but it was like some Nike shorts. So it was, it was, it was Bulls paraphernalia from two different, you know, manufacturing eras, and it was not. Uh, and, and plus, if you're gonna do all that, you, you need not to be sorry. True. You know. True. He, you know, dude was throwing up. Throwing on mad bricks, and you know he had on. You could tell he was a fan. You know, he had on the shoes, the the shorts, and the jersey. It's always somebody who dresses like that. It is that never, can't hoop. But then here comes, hope. you know, and above the rim, rim here comes Tom Shepard and in, in, <laughs> in a thermal and, and some corduroys and some street shoes and giving out work. Yeah, just doing big things. So you gotta watch. You gotta watch out for those types that don't look, don't dress the part at all. My man, longevity. How are you, buddy? Doing great. Yeah. 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 All right, all right, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Good to see you as always. You as well? My man DJ J. Diff. What's happening, man? Salutations. What's going on? Oh, I can't call it anything good, Joey. Yep. Same old. Oh, quick. <laughs> yep. 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 Just gonna get me up good. out of there, huh? Everything's good? Everything's copacetic. All right. All right. Good, 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 good to hear. Yes, sir. Hey, you see Mike Epps and uh, Shannon Sharp got into it a little spat. First of all, and man. And then Shannon Sharp was like, uh, he was going to pull up. Unbeknownst to him, oh, <laughs> Indianapolis, Indiana is where Mike Epps is from. Mm. Yeah, so uh, right I ain't gonna. I'm not gonna hold you. Uh, Mike Epps was very smart when he said, "I'm too old to be out here fighting," which he's right. Both of them are actually, but Mike Epps also knew, like you said, exactly where he was about to be this weekend. Yeah. And I wouldn't want uh, uh, you gonna pull up on who. I, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I would. I wouldn't want Unk. I wouldn't want Unk, Unk to catch a hold of Mike Epps. Though. Yeah. I don't think that's going to end too well. But they said they were going to actually have a conversation. Yeah. Um, Unk was just mad because he was capping, saying that you know he had invited him onto the show and he never that's did. A comedian. But Mike trying to get pub for this special that he's about to drop. That's what this is about, man. They just he playing the system. That's well, that you know, if you're a con if you're a comedian, and you want to talk bad about other people, go see Shannon Sharp. He'll let you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did y'all watch the Monique one? I just didn't I care. Like Monique, parts least, of it? like Mo I watched, I, I watched parts Monique. of it, but it was just like, when is when's the last time Monique told some jokes? At least I can know. Yeah. I know when Cat Wave has got to tell even some her, jokes. Even her stand up show, she doesn't tell jokes anymore. Well, so, she, no, because I, I tried to watch the last one. She the got one a special. That got on Netflix, she got a special, and it was just like her ranting against people. And I was like, this is. I mean, I don't See, watch comedy shows f for you to about air your personal grievances. Monique, Monique is interesting because some of the stuff that she says. In terms of the back channels and how she may be, you know, received or treated, some of the stuff that she says sounds believable. Like a people, lot of it does. Like you know what? Like you see what I'm saying? Like when she talks about getting jerked or people uh, making it hard for her to do X, Y, Z. A lot of people come out say it comes off as complaining, but I'm like, yeah, I could see her being blackballed on the low by some of her peers. That's not far fetched to me. But no, she's not. But at the same time, like she's still complaining. Okay, but this fair. is the thing. I for this is everyone, like what five six years later. Yeah, but for anybody I, who's I mean, a fan of the show Martin, yeah, like my favorite episode is is called Hollywood Swinging when <laughs> uh, with with Tommy Davidson was playing the character Varnell Hill. Uh, yeah. Oh, when which they was, go to L.A. Which is kind of a send up of Arsenio Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they were like, that's what Hollywood is. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying people will say, hey, when you get out here, call me or I'm gonna do this for you. And then when you get out there, they're like, uh, yeah, I, that's just Hollywood talk. Mm -hmm. I I fully believe that. You know, and there are people who's like, they don't get that. 
He and was when like, they, they <laughs> think everyone, people are not of their, it's Hollywood. And plus, you know, there was that story she told about Kevin Hart, which is the only part I thought was kind of in bad taste. And she talked about how Kevin Hart, like, just gave her some money. So Which to, I think is dope. But then, like, she was, but then told a story about how, like, you know, they, they were going to do this production, da, 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 and it didn't go through. And then you still, you still talking crazy about this man where like okay whatever business you were supposed to do did not go through but on a personal level when you needed help he, he looked cut out you for a you. check i mean right. she she addressed i think she addressed that in a decent way her whole i would have not was, told that story at all was her was him pretty much having the assistant caller saying that whatever was gonna happen ain't gonna happen and then her having the conversation with kevin hart and this being two years ago, and she still hasn't heard from me. Look, but he said she was going to talk to him the next day. It, but, ga- it gave me build him up to tear him down vibes. Well, like, you know, like this she is gave, she threw him a lob for the check, but then it was like, yeah, but this is what happened. But you know what? You see what I'm saying? In, in Hollywood, who do you, if, if it comes down to it, who are they going to side with? Oprah and Tyler Perry and Will Packer or Monique? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's, oh, that's so no I mean, brainer. y'all can be, be disappointed in these people, but you know, they, you know, this Hollywood is a game. It's not about friends. It's not about people being down. This is about money. That's and if you wanted to make it about something else, you talk about people's integrity. Okay, but like, don't set yourself up to be disappointed. If I ever went out to, if I had a friend in Hollywood and he said, "Yo, come see me," I'd be, I'd go anywhere else but to go see him because that's just not how the people operate out there. And Everybody, you, it's like prison. Like nobody gives you any. Like if you get to prison and somebody just gives you a honey bun, or soup, the item. don't just think, oh, they trying to be cool. Nah. No, you gonna have to pay for that honey bun yeah. or them soup some way it's or another. Be interest. So <laughs> you, box, that's how Hollywood is. Box. And if, and if you box is and if you have that mentality, and this it could extend to the record business, whatever, anything in entertainment, don't expect people to do anything for you without you without some get back. And if you don't understand the get back, then don't get involved. Go look at it. But isn't the whole thing with Monique, like the people saying that she's hard to work with, mm-hmm. does she not come across like she's really hard to work with? Yeah. I mean, I, I this is and this isn't a shot at Monique because I really don't have any skin in the game. And I don't really care. But like I watched part of this and I'm just like, OK, complaint, complaint, complaint. And there's there's definitely some validity there to your I, point. I think so. But I'm like, wow, you really do seem like you're hard to work with. Yeah. No, and, no, I've, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's probably telling the truth, a lot of truths, and mm-hmm, probably agree. a lot, a lot of fabricated things. Maybe a little bit because I seen the when she had to sit down with Steve Harvey. Yeah, and Steve Harvey was like, you know, I kind of wanted to help you out, but I got to get out here and make this money, so I can't <laughs> look help. Look at that arms, look at Steve Harvey impression. He was shucking and jiving, pretty much like I, I couldn't, I couldn't help you because I got, I got to eat. Yeah, I got to keep my soups and my oatmeal and my and, and my honey bun. It, yeah. it just seems like she missed the whole. It's one of the things that I tell younger artists, too. It's like Mm. the most important thing. Yes, you have to be talented. You have to know the right people. But to me, the most important piece in growing anything you're doing is simply being likable. Yeah. And if you are not likable by the people that you're around, they are not going to extend anything to you. And they're not going to want to mess with you because you're not likable. Who wants to be around somebody who isn't likable? And I don't know if Monique is or is. I don't know enough about her. And I'm not trying to, you know, give her negative. She's going at the wrong people to be. But it it doesn't seem like she's very likable. But Lone, to your point about the the energy, negative energy or people that are not likable. I don't know what clip it was on Instagram, but I saw it was a young lady that said she was, she had a session with J Cole and J. Cole walked in, sat down, and, you know, just was chilling, listening to what was playing in the room. And he just got up and left. And they said they asked him why he left when he went to the other room. That the vibe was bad. The energy was bad. Mm. And he just, he just walked out. Right. So we've all dealt with people on both sides. We've dealt with artists and creatives that are so much fun to work with. Mm-hmm. And then the other ones that, to your point, that are like pulling teeth, it's just, it becomes... It's not worth it. It's a, it's a waste of time, a, a waste of energy. It's a self awareness thing. I understand my own aura sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's True. just what it is. You just True. have to be self aware. Like I don't know, but no, I, maybe look, I'm wrong. I don't know. Look, all I know is I, this: if I could give any advice to anybody, this doesn't even have to extend to the inter- entertainment business because I've had some dealings recently uh, with some people who clearly did not understand the room that they were in and they did not understand who they were talking to. Right? Is that manners will take you where money won't. Oh, that's number one. And if you don't know who you're talking to, keep your mouth shut because I'll just, I, I won't say any names, but I literally had somebody say to me and another DJ, you know, we asked him to do something specific regarding equipment. 
you know, this, we say, hey, this is expensive equipment. You can't, you got to do the right thing here. Instead of just complying mm-hmm. with his OGs, very much OGs, he decided to say, I got money. <laughs> which is you nice. got to understand there uh, you say things like that on the street mm-hmm. you wind up uh with a with a busted eye socket you right. know but luckily you know he was speaking to two people who had things to lose yeah so but you know when you when you don't know who you're talking to and you say certain things yeah you've got to understand that people are going to carry that with them and then when they ask about you they're going to be like oh this is how he acts he got money yeah. though he got you money know? and then the thing is when i know you don't got money you certainly shouldn't say i got money yeah i same thing. I, I've had people. I'd have. I've had people. We've all had people talk behind our back, mm-hmm. and then the person told us, "Just because it's like I'm cool that's with it. all these people." That's it. You know, it's just like that's it. I, it's gonna come it, back around. It's that's happened, it. It's happened multiple times. It's, it's gonna like, come back all right, around. Man, and usually it's on some some just envious type stuff, anyways. But yeah. but it's what it is. You know. So young DJs respect your DJ OGs. You understand that. You know, just when they nice. tell you, when just they, be nice. Yeah. And when you, like I said, I got money. You got to have, you got to have your manners together and understand that who you're talking to and who they know, who they could say, tell them what you said. There was a time where Uh-oh. I had business owners that would text me that own venues and be like, is this person worthwhile? Oh, ask because of your credibility yes. with them. They yeah. used to text yeah. me like, is this person worthwhile to yeah. potentially give Do this business with? Yeah. And I would be like, yeah. I'd be like, yeah, nah. I, it's just yeah, this person's I've been, I've been in that nobody else nobody knows across who, the city now yeah it's because because like, of, of this one interaction mm, see and that's unfortunate but you know and then you know nobody should be defined by their worst moment as we always say but at no, the same, no they shouldn't but, but at the same time you, you've got to you've if you got give to somebody and do better if you get the one moment i agree with that comment 100 percent. but enough moments will for somebody sure. will show you who they are if you give yeah, them enough time for sure if you consistently a bad person, that's just who you are. I, I never forget there was a time me and Terry were in the Vogue just out of, I don't know what show it was. Maybe it was a Danny Brown show or something. Yeah. And we were just chilling. And this dude walked in being super Hollywood. Oh, with, for with, real? With like his manager or something. Oh, yeah. I remember. And it was just kind of like, all right, man. Like he didn't know who we were at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this kind of like how he was talking. Not that we were anybody, you know, or anything like that, but... We 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 were out here doing things, but it was just kind of a lot of things. Actually, and it was just kind of it was just kind of like, all right, man. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. Have yep. you, you and your manager <laughs> for you, like you and, and your like, manager keep walking and around. It's like his whole purpose was like trying to get in front of the right people, mm-hmm. and he just kind of like dismissed us. It was just it was just one of those things. I don't know. You so. never know who you're gonna need, brother. You never know never who you're gonna need. Same people you see up on on the way up are the same people you see on the way down. Mm-hmm. All right, man, let's go ahead and jump into. No, I wasn't scaring the hoes. It was it was a it was a long time. Ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still one of my favorite names for a group. <laughs> this was like back in like I think it was the Black Milk when he was uh, maybe or no 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 I know it, uh, it was when Danny Brown was dressed in the Tigger. Yeah, yeah, on the whatever, outfit. whatever that was. Like, I want to say, uh, Das Racist might have been with him. Uh, that's right. Who? Yeah, it was das, a group called Das Racist. Mm-hmm. It's a great name. Das Racist. Das, das Racist. Yeah. yeah, Das Racist. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. It was like uh, two. One it dude was like, like Indian, Indian dude. I think Indian yeah. dude, yeah. and then yeah. So they just they just was gonna roll with that theme, and all the records and stuff reflected that. Is that what it was? Or? It's nah. like them calling it out, kind yeah. of. Oh, I got it's it. Like, I got it. I got it. I got it. It's just it was very comedic, actually. Mm-hmm. I see. They had a couple of records. Yeah. But. All right. Dig it. Let's let's pivot here. Did you guys see the 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 here the two records from Beyonce's country effort? No, yep. I did. <laughs> it made it made me think about. When we talked about Drake and his whatever you call that album, what was the name of the album? The Calypso music <laughs> stuff Calypso. or whatever. No, when the house, the house attempt, yeah. or whatever I mean, it was. Beyonce did the same thing. She though. did. She but, just did it right. Yeah. The, but what she did do it right. But what I'm asking is the genre hopping. I'm, I mean, Beyonce going from house to country, Drake doing house back to hip hop. You know, sometimes we talk about the culture vulture thing or whatever, but I feel like it's just creative expression at this point is becoming mm-hmm. way more acceptable. They're, they're pop artists at the end of the day, but Beyonce, so, Beyonce has some meat in the game when it comes to country. She's from Houston, Texas. That's, that's a so good point. her cultural upbringing has a lot to do with country style stuff. Okay. Like the cowboy, the rodeo, things like that. So it that's more authentic. It's more authentic. I don't know musically if if she's always been up on country. I don't know that much about her, but, but did, I think it's it's more believable than somebody just jumping into multiple cultures 
doing what they do just because it sounds good. Well, what, do you, what do you go ahead, Lone? I'm sorry. Well, I mean, she's not to me. I, I view this a little bit different than like I would a Post Malone because right. Post Malone. That's what I'm talking about. Post Malone jumped in, capitalized on it, and then jumped out. Miley Cyrus jumped into it, right. then said hip hop is horrible, and then left it after yeah. the fact. You know, or. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I got you, you know, this is just Beyonce doing a couple country records, I guess. And yeah. then well, she got a full she's release. Gonna do album. Out. It's going to be a oh, whole so album. Is, is it supposed to be album? a whole album? Is that what they're saying? Or is that it's just what the arms yeah. were? Yeah, because the. Or is the, it going to be all country? From what I saw, Act Two is supposed to be country based. Now, I could be wrong. Y'all correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. But it might explain why she keeps wearing all these cowboy hats. I mean, but once again, she's from Houston, where right. that, that doesn't sound crazy. Yeah, I like, Lone, I like your breakdown. That. That makes more sense. That, yeah. I, I like your breakdown. Yeah, I, I think if like she was legitimately came out and she said, oh, I'm just trying to jump into country real quick because I, I want to get some country fans. I don't think that's what she's doing. Right. Right. I think she's legitimately trying to make a country album because she wants to make a country album. And then she's probably going to go back and make more of the same type of stuff that she was doing this before. Will. Jay Moore, where are you on it being, you know, especially when you get superstars, megastars doing that? Do you think it is becoming more, accept I mean, more acceptable or is it just because of what Terry said? It's 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 just because it's a pop star doing it. I think it's it's because it's a pop star doing it, and a pop star is going to gravitate to and do music that they feel will be popular. Right. Because that's what pop music. I don't know when they when they categorize it as something else. Yeah. And say it's just a style of music that doesn't that's never made sense to me. Nah. So it's um, whatever's popular. You know. Right. I don't know. I'm not particularly interested in it. I I listen to the records and. I guess, you know, I don't know if yeah. they're good country records. They weren't records that I really wanted to revisit. But um, once again, I understand that Beyonce has a real fan base that will follow her wherever she goes. Yeah, I think there's I think there's just nuance involved in, in this type of conversation, I think, is the important piece. Right. Because I can see I mean, she is technically if we're just going to look at it black and white, she is technically doing the same thing that what we say culture vultures do. That's why I pose the question. But I think it's deeper than that. Right. That's, That's the reason why I said that it can be, she could still be being true to herself because of her upbringing and where she's from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that that's part of their, their culture at the yeah. end of the day. And at the end of the day, I don't have any issue with Miley Cyrus making a hip hop album and then making a pop album and then making a hip hop album and then making, you know, like I don't have any issue with that. I think the only or, issue with me with what she did was <clears throat> doing it gaining all those fans and popularity and selling out arenas and then deciding to come back and be like, well, I don't really like hip hop like that yeah, anymore. That's, that's, and that, then trying to jump back over when it didn't work. Exactly. No, that's exactly what I was getting at. That's, the part that's what bull. I'm getting at. Is yeah. It's like, she was literally using it for like, all right, let me see if this works. I'm going to do this over here. Like, I don't really see Beyonce caring either way if this works or not. Nah, right. You know what I mean? I think she's <laughs> doing it. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, and, and I think there's there's place for that conversation to be had, but yeah. I see... I see that there's a little bit deeper of a nuance involved in these particular types of artists that, that we're talking about. Right. And there is, there is something to be said too about a white artist doing this to a black culture versus a Beyonce doing this to a country culture, which we can say is a white culture, but country historically is derived from black. I mean, black Ray people. Charles, one of Talk his big breakthroughs was a country album, right? you know, but this is, but it's also, this is where it's going to be interesting because, you know, when, a white artist, you know, does R and B or like if it's a Sam Smith, yeah, he jumps in and he gets stay stay with me. That gets played Dope record. on Urban AC Radio. Get, get Mary J. Blige to come jump on it. We embrace when people want to, you know, be a part of our culture. You know, even with Post Malone at first, that White Iverson, I don't that was For sure. That was on that was on Urban Radio. Facts. You know, it'll be interesting to see what um traditional country radio does with these Beyonce records. Well, we already got an issue with that. I mean, I so saw earlier today, or was it yesterday? I don't know. When it, between yesterday and today, uh, someone had called a country radio station mm -hmm. and asked them to play Beyonce's new record. And they responded back, we don't play Beyonce music here on our radio station. Mm. So I got this is where we're at already with it. I got another topic that, that's going to play into that, but I, that's a very good point, Terry. It's already starting to cause a little ripple. I'm but just it saying, did like, the same thing when uh, Lil Nas X had Old Town Road. They, he had to enlist uh, Billy, Billy, Ray Cyrus. Yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus to get on there in order for them to start playing it on the radio stations. Well, I mean, and so like that's the interesting nuance because they didn't wait for, you know, when Sam Smith got his song on the radio, he added Mary J. Blige later. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and I remember they sent the NSYNC record gone. Gone, yeah, gone and was gone. 
and Gone wound up on, in quite. It was on one hundred six point. It wound up in quite one hundred six. It was on uh, uh, one hundred six in Park. That's what I meant. To and say. it wound up in in TLC's rotation, mm-hmm. or not TLC, but um, yeah, it, it wound up in the Quiet Storm's rotation. Yeah. Like if it if it's good and it works, then. And for the format, then we mess with it. But like, if this is a country record, it's getting and people like it, and they're like, nah, but we just don't play Beyonce records because honestly, the program director I had at the time could have been like, we don't play in sync records. Mm-hmm. But it, it, the door didn't swing both ways in, in that. No, way. it never has. Unfortunately, you know, I remember even when you can even take it back, like. People don't. People think about what BET is and modern BET. I remember they would play Phil Collins. They would play the Pet Shop Boys. They would play Culture Club. Anything that was that that slapped would get played on Video Soul. You know, we just didn't. They didn't. I, the first time, the first time they played New Kids on the Block, they, they have a they have a separate video for their very first song that mm. only got played on BET. Please you don't know, go, girl. Please, there's a there's a there are two versions of that video. Mm-hmm. There's a BT version, and then once they crossed over, there's one that they they put on other channels. I, I can't even say B- MTV. Cause MTV VH1 because M- MTV hated uh, the new kids on the block. Mm. That's a story for another time. But it's it, that's that's back when they was more on their rock and roll too. Yeah, yeah. So they they there's always there's always been that nuance of like where do we play this even if our audience already likes it and wants it because this is not who we are. And it's like okay, we'll see how that works out for you. Oh, this will be fun. Yeah. Go ahead, Lone. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, even I remember back in the Bringing Down the Band days, like, it didn't matter who the artist was. If the music was dope and it fit within, it doesn't matter if it's That's Vanilla it. Ice dropping a dope record or if it's it. Billy Ray Cyrus dropping raps that we didn't know we had. Like, we're going to share it because that's where it goes. So good music on good. I probably wasn't going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, what if, I, to what be if, honest, what if Billy I, Ray Cyrus just had flows. I mean, I, to might. be honest, I probably wouldn't either. But if it was dope, if it was dope, I guess is the point. Yeah, if it's dope, that, and that was literally the point of it was like, if it's dope, cool. Mm-hmm. We distribute dopeness. We play the dope stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. Right. It doesn't matter who you are. But yeah, I, I get the I get the politics involved. But politics is usual. Now, do you you guys remember the conversation we had about the box set with the acapellas and yeah, you remember that stuff? Mm-hmm. We were talking about that. So, I just got a question. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm not gonna reference anything because I think it's two sides to it, right? How do we feel about the production company slash estate collaborations that enable unreleased music to come out by some of like some of the OGs and some of the legends? Because some people will say it's not necessary. Like, just let the OG be the OG and just go through some back catalog or whatever. Some people as fans will say we would love to hear new music. Like, we would love to hear unreleased music from, you know, legendary Jay artists. Dilla? Well, you can say Dilla if you want. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think about that, man? Because I could see from a fan's perspective, new Dilla? Hey. It's not about it's not about the fan's perspective, though. That's why I'm, that's why I'm just throwing it out there. I'm asking you know, what it's not about the fan's perspective, because if the fans want everything, you know what I mean? Okay. But what does the artist want? Well, we don't know because the artist has passed away, you know, and uh, sometimes we don't know if uh, even family members and even estates have the artist's best interest at heart. So I, I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky it's a tricky one. Because I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying on the back end with the. And it also depends on the artist. Is it an artist that has already released a ton of music? that had a, a bunch of music that was slated to release. And uh, like, for example, uh-huh. I'm not interested in hearing any more tucked away Dilla stuff. Okay. I'm not interested in hearing any more tucked away Mac Miller stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm not really Other inter- than the one with Mad Lib. I ain't gonna lie. I want to hear that. Long. I'm not, I'm not inter- I'm personally not interested in hearing that because, no. because they he made said it when he was alive. He did. Obviously, he made it all. Of well, I mean, it, it was it was already. Well, what I mean by that is they actually recorded it and they just never put it out. But they were not intending to release anything uh-huh. intentionally. Okay. So, I, you know, same same with Nipsey. Like, I, I don't know. It's one thing if it's within a certain period of time, but when it comes out way later and it's like a part of an official release. Uh huh. Me personally, that's what that's. What I am not me. interested. Okay, I'm kinda, not interested. It's still, to me, it depends on what it is. Like a few years back, they released a Marvin Gray Gay album that he actually was going to release, mm-hmm. but didn't do it because of the time, so to speak. So it it it, it would have caused trouble with maybe his uh, his record label or his fans if he had released it back then because of political reasons. Right. Mm-hmm. They ended up releasing it like within the last few years. And it was something that he had already finished and accomplished before he passed away. I have so no think, issues with that. I think things like that 
Yeah. It's cool to let it go yeah. because mm-hmm. he's already familiar with how it sounded. They didn't add or tweak anything. They might have made it sound a little better, but it's the right. it, it's the essence of the album when it came out. Yeah. That's right. the reason why I'm cool with if if the Mac Miller and Mad Lib joint, if that comes out, I'm good with that. If people are just hopping on beats and stuff and he didn't even know you, mm-hmm. he's talking about like Dilla, right. essentially. Right. If you weren't one of Soquarians or anything like that, then I'm probably not feeling that. Yeah, I, I guess it is more nuanced. And I, I think it, I think to your point, it depends on the story mm-hmm. behind it. And it depends on like everything involved. The Mac, if I learn more about this Mac Miller and Mad Lib thing, and they are they actually putting it out? I didn't think they were going to. I just heard rumors. I heard rumors was, that it exists. Yeah. And I were, knew that it exists. You know, they were but, thinking about But possibly. I also heard it like, nah, it's like Mad Lib. I'm pretty sure it was Mad Lib said, nah, it's not coming out. It's not coming out. Because it was just, they just made some records. But, mm. you know, I, I don't know. I think as long as it's, it just has to be tasteful. It just right. has to be tasteful. That's right. the only thing. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. And I think that's a struggle sometimes. So especially in the music industry. What you think, Jay? It's hard because I've enjoyed some posthumous releases, you know. Sometimes they get it right, you know, but it, or songs rather, maybe not full releases. You like I after after Machiavelli, which he you know, which was finished before Pac passed. Right. I really don't have I, I like a, a couple the records here and there, but by and large, I didn't like anything that came out after he died that was put together without any of his input. I'll take "Are You Still Down." No, not me. I'm gonna take some of that because it's it's some it's some it's some records. There's some there. joints on there. I'm gonna take "Are You Still." Not the whole thing, but I'm gonna take some records off "Are You Still." And Down. And then the Outlaws album. There's some joints oh, on there. Still, I rise joint. Yeah, yeah. but um, I see where you're going, though. I see where you know, but you know, I I I, and then like. I try to revisit like the, um, you know, the it was what the Biggie Duets record. Now that and, yeah, that wasn't it. And that then, wasn't it. And then Born Again. I was like, both of those are not good. Yeah, nope. yeah, not good at all. Have not aged well. Because honestly, Biggie was a guest on on like he didn't have a whole bunch of extra stuff just laying around like Pac did. Pac had whole albums recorded yeah. that we never saw, but they weren't put out in the same form in which he had intended. Right. You know, they were just kind of slapdash thrown together. And I, I know they had to take some stuff and not use it because he was still talking crazy about people. Right. You know, and they didn't want any of those bad feelings to be out there after he died. But I just am not interested. I mean, like, it'd be one thing if it was like Dilla Beat tapes. I know those were floating around on the, on you know, the internet. And maybe if you put, made an official release to where I, it's just not me with a bunch of bootlegs. And mm-hmm. there were things that were never intentionally, and you put those out, okay, because I have enjoyed those to a certain extent, sure. and I'd love to be able to stream them uh, and listen to them, but I don't want all of a sudden for you to have, you know, the baby ramming over Jay Dilla beats, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't feel that same way if Common, who they were roommates at one point in Good California, point. Good point. you know, rapped over something that he had done. Yeah, so same. once again, that's where we talk about nuance, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, just don't let, you know, you know, Sweetie or Coil Ray or or any of these new rappers say, yeah, let's let's just give them a Jay Dilla beat for for visibility, and Jay Dilla would have never worked with any of these people. You know, Jay Dilla worked with a core group of people. You couldn't. I, I mean, I feel like there were it's a situation where probably more people wanted beats from him, right? That couldn't get him. I mean, he had beat tapes out there. He had a lot of beat exactly tapes. beat tapes out there. But uh, you know, I, I you know, but a lot of people, you know, like they. They, they pray at the altar of Jay Dilla the now after now, he's dead. They sure. didn't purchase yeah, those sure. beats when he was sending them tapes out. Yeah. yeah. You know, now it's the end thing yeah. or it's it's the 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 hip hop thing now to be hip to Jay Dilla. Whereas, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't so when he was alive. For sure. I have a problem with that. Yeah. Personally. Yes. Um So now for some great credibility, you'll be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a Jay Dilla beat. And this was happening. Like 10 years ago, like 10, 15 years ago. I mean, this is not really a super new thing, but, you know, if it happened now, I would just kind of even look at it even weirder. I don't know. Like, I mean, I think it's been, you, it's been 15 years. I was about to say, you make a very good 20 point. 20 years almost. Almost. You yeah. make a good point when you talk about the time lapse from when they've passed. As it continues to age, it gets worse in terms of, I guess, not worse, but it's more uncomfortable on how it's going to hit because it just yeah. gets corny. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. And a lot of these beats that he had on these beat tapes, because I've heard them, I have a lot of these, and Mm -hmm. I've had them for two decades, Mm -hmm. like, they were just, they were demos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So were they taking the demos and looping the demos? Like, come on, man. Like, I, I don't know. I know yeah. what it's like to have or beat tapes and have and demos. Somebody reinterpolating the the demo or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's and, it's, and even it's, that ain't gonna hit the same. Nah. It's just it's like you have to be super tasteful with it. I think that's my only thing. It's like taste, taste, taste and, and people, taste and the people around you. Like yeah. 
Yeah. And not everybody that's around you is worth. Look, my mother means well, and I know she loves me. But would I put my mother in charge of my catalog to distribute it after I pass away? Probably not. Right. You know what I mean? Like I would put it for you. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You take it. I know you're not I, going I, to do me bad. I, exactly. You know I'm gonna I mean? take care of you. Yeah. So, for you know. Sure. And, but sure. there's always the thing where I'm like, you know, if this Lock is wood. if this is going yes. to people's families, their kids, then who am I to hate on it? But at the same time, just from knowing artists and, and the argument that you just made, legacy yeah. matters. You know, it does. You just can't, for lack of a better term, whore out what I made when I was alive. Yeah. To anybody, just so you can get a little bit of money over here. Cause you know, once again, it, Jay Dilla's legacy is more to us, the fans than what it's probably ever generated to him monetarily and his yeah. family. Mm, I like that. So the balance yeah. taste, do it with taste. Please do it with taste. If you're going to do something like that, that's all I say. But that's, that's what, you know, cause that's where, you know, with the whole Biggie duets, I, I, it wasn't even that the music was particularly bad. I just thought it was, <laughs> it, just, didn't match. it was distasteful at this point nah. to hear these records you know, and first it of all, it came off corny. Like Terry used corny. Well, actually, US, when it when it came out, I wanted to hear it. I ain't gonna lie, I did too. And then, but as time went on, and you start losing these artists and hearing what they're doing to the music after they pass, you're like, man, I don't really sound right. It's because we're having legacy talks now, and this yeah. is a part of his legacy to some degree. Now, now, granted, we don't really factor that into the big no, albums, no. but it, it still is a part of it. And you know, because once you hit, you hear it, and you're like. First of all, it got to the point where it was like, okay, I heard, I'd heard everything Big had done, right. whether it be a B side, you know, something that wasn't supposed to be released that they had cleaned up. And at this point, like now, I'm hearing you take verses from songs I really, really liked and turning them into songs that I don't like at all. Just yeah. to be with this artist or in groups that weren't even out when he was alive. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yep. well, especially if you're talking about somebody. If we, if we we're gonna use um, Jay Dillon. Somebody mentioned Common earlier. Like if there's beats that are, that we haven't heard, we'll just say because he got he's had tapes floating out for years, floating yeah. around for years. But let's say there's a stash that we just haven't heard, right? That Common has. That Common has, or or Buster, Buster Rhymes, Rhymes is gonna jump on. Right. <laughs> like I remember there was supposed to be a uh, a project called Diligence. And think I think that part did, of it that did came come out. out. That came Some out. of it okay, came out. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, if you got beats like that, and Common is like, I mean, or Buster's like, yo, let me take them. That was my boy. We're gonna do about six or eight, and let's just put it out. I'm all for Come on with it. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, that's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, that works, but yeah. I'm with you on the table. like part. when Erica Badu had some Dilla production on her albums, but yeah. she worked with Dilla. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, man. It's I think the 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 phrase the the phrase is just like you said, lone intention and just tastefulness, man, if you're gonna do it. Because not, not everybody out here has taste, man. <clears throat> no, you can preach into the choir. You know, like you gotta tell me. It's just a lot of so, corniness. Because uh, uh, everybody's intentions are good. Yeah. And, then, you know, sometimes it's about that bread. And when you're talking legacy, <laughs> you can take a legacy hit easy. We've seen it happen. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. all right, man, we'll see. Can we shout out our good old partners? Why not? Like Beyonce would say. <laughs> our partners. Partners. Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. I did some foreshadowing earlier because we... We mentioned Beyonce and good old country music. And mm-hmm. uh, I saw this article from T-Pain where he says he's experienced racism working on country music. Now, I know T- no. now I know T-Pain is... <laughs> I know don't T- say. I know T-Pain is talented. Like, I'm not shocked that he can that write country good. records. Like, that boy good. Like, when I'm not, it's not about that. But he actually said, I done wrote a lot of country songs, but I stopped taking credit for it because as cool as it is to see your name in those credits, and ish like that. The racism that comes after it is just like, I'll just take the check. Don't put don't put me on that ish. I'll just take the check, bro. Never mind. And then he also says, I wrote a lot of country music for huge country artists that would rather not have it known that I write for them. Hmm. Ghostwriter. Is, is I mean that exists in hip hop, man. Get your money. But what do y'all what do y'all think about it kind of goes to what you talked about with the people where we don't play Beyonce, I think you said, somebody said mm-hmm. that, we don't play that. You don't want T-Pain 
as a writer for one of your writing credits? Shocked? Not really, but I just know T-Pain is, he seems like he's just a likable dude, and he's super talented, got a great pen. Everybody knows him. When he said it, he probably was smiling while he was having that he conversation. Was. Oh, yeah. I, I saw the video. Yeah, yeah like... I don't know, man. What you what you I mean, think? He laughed. He was like, <laughs> you know, he did the T Pain laugh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he made it evident, though. I'm still getting the bag. I, I'm taking the check, but I'd like to know. And I know just because of political connection, you still want to get these checks. I was like, look, let's put a, let's put uh, let's put something on this. Let's who are the people who that's, would take your records? That's a good but point. Didn't want to give you credit, not in the the you know the in the credit. You still got your money, but for whatever reason, they didn't want you associated with a good song like if we're still doing that in 2024 which i guess isn't like if you worried about perception and and your um your fans are the same people who were shooting bud lights yeah. six months ago then yeah. i guess i kind of get it yeah but right. at the same time it's like is this really what we're doing still it's kind of weird to be to think about it that he was uh writing songs for people that like a, a legit ghostwriter. i don't know it's kind of kind of weird i don't know it's kind of weird to me well, shout out to T Pain for out here telling the truth, you know. And if that really is the truth, I'm, that's that kind of make us that's sad. That's something I would expect somebody to say that we went through this X amount of years ago. This is current, like this is an article. This is current, and he, this type of thing that's still happening. Is, oh, I don't know. Uh, it, spe- it speaks to. I mean, I, I'm not shocked at all. I mean, it speaks. No, it either. speaks to the United States of America. Mm-hmm. It, it does. It does. No, I, it, spe- I, I, it speaks to the United States of America. It speaks to. Literally, the race divide, it speaks to our political divide, you know, um, and the the climate of everything. You know, I absolutely would understand why T-Pain would not want to even deal with it anyways. Yeah. You know, cool. Just let me get my money. Yeah. Here is this song. Yeah. You know what keep I mean? Keep it coming. Keep and we, it, and we, keep don't it have to, we don't have to uh, talk. We don't have nope. to do anything. We just, just keep it keep it on the low. Yeah. And I make sure I get paid. Yeah, because you're always going to catch, you're going to catch, you know, look, this is, you know, people be like, well, I don't think America's a racist country. It's because they look at it from, you know, an individualist standpoint and there's yeah. always outliers. Yeah. But the same people that don't consider America a racist country just happen to fall in line with this entire genre in general. Not everybody. But, 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 but most people. Yeah, the mo- yeah, this is a lot. Part. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. Yeah, I just you, you know. know, people in those areas they don't they don't witness racism on a daily basis. That's why they don't think it exists. And they think it's individual. It's individual. Yeah. They, they they think, well, I've never burned a cross, and yeah, you yeah. know, I I'm, I like black. People. I'm kind <laughs> to the I'm kind of the black fellow at work. You know, like they, yeah. in their mind, that means everything's okay. I, I watch like sports. We like sports, and we don't care who knows football, 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 football tennis, hockey. You know, but then you see uh, what they when they hear lift every voice and sing at the Super Bowl, they're like, uh, oh, "This is malarkey." <laughs> I don't know that. why you growl like that, bro. Because that's I would not be that's... watching this year's Super Bowl game because <laughs> I'm not standing for it. But they also have a weird comment, you know, on their Facebook page about Usher's halftime show. Yeah, you what, know what I mean. What were they mad about on that? Why didn't he bring out know. Justin Bieber? He could have put something in there for I, us too. I'm, Justin I'm Bieber just saying, didn't want like, to. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, there's, there's subtleties around. I don't know why I did stuff, that, right? voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's subtleties around it that a lot of white people just don't pick up on, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's the, that's the element that T Pain is kind of speaking on for all you guys that are. Gonna when are we going to get a halftime show for us? Yeah, it's like, well, exactly. Yeah, they, going, they could, they could bring Fog Hat yeah. out there and do something. Yeah, wow. seats taken. Sleets take. <laughs> Can't sit here. Well, you got Jay Z running a uh, sound, so to speak. <laughs> Jay Z definitely uh, running sound on these uh, Super Bowl performances. So you might who, have a who did, it, who did it last year? Uh, Rihanna. Yeah. And then before that, it was Dr. Dre. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Dre. So it was yeah. like you know, that's, Snoop, they were like that's three in a row now. Cent, Eminem. They had Eminem. That's still that's yeah, still three in a row for them anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I'm just saying we could have somebody out there. Yeah. What do you? What, do you, could, what, what about Keith Bi- Urban? I, <laughs> what about Billie Eilish? I I've seen her. She seems nice. No, nah, I don't think they like Billie Eilish. <laughs> It'll be Miley Cyrus. I really hope it's it not would Miley definitely Cyrus. be Miley. You know, if if you're gonna if you're gonna keep uh, shoving Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift down Swift. our throat, at least let her perform at the mm-hmm. game. Now that should now that should be a uh, that should be a boost on one of these bed naps to see if she performs next year at the Super Bowl. Well, I take that bet. That's okay, that. Oh, he's running sound, ain't he? He's running sound. Yeah, you're right. But, he's you know, running sound. I mean, he'll be Tracy Chapman. I don't know. That, that doesn't quite. If she brings, <laughs> if she brings out that one feller I saw at the CMAs, I'd really like that. That seems like something I could get into. We need a, we need a Chasey Trapman, Chasey Trapman, Roll. 
T Pain. You know, we fool with Jelly Roll. Beyonce, Ball. country music set yeah. live at. It'll no, be, no, it'll, it'll be Taylor Swift, and and the kicker will be that Beyonce will come out and do one of her songs, and it'll break the world. The because, world would literally break. The internet yeah. would break if, if what he just said happened. But I'm it's just saying, like, we so could it's gonna do... be like, we are the world. No, no, no. Nah, that is yeah, actually but, but a really good racism? documentary. For... <laughs> it's gonna be we are the world for, for racism. racism. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good documentary. Did you see that documentary? I, I have not yet, but I heard it's, it's good. amazing. It's very good, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, we could have somebody out there that that you know that America could get behind. Who would that be? Me. I'm, I'm just saying. We could put Lone up there. You know, I mean, it was the a lot. Kid Rock and never get it. Nah, Kid Rock's already done it. I know, but he'll never get. That's that's when he was on the other side of the coin. Well, yeah, that's when we thought he was, <laughs> he was that's, on what? That's when we, <laughs> on that's the other side. Of yeah, the that's coin. when we thought he was our friend. Yeah, yeah. if Jay Z running sound, I know damn well Kid Rock ain't gonna be in there. He ain't getting it. They said Deion Sanders said Lil Wayne should do it. I'm against that. Yeah, Wayne I don't got, think, <laughs> I don't think I don't know if Wayne, Wayne is, I don't know if Wayne is a Super Bowl halftime performer. No, nah, he but have, he got the records. He would have to have Drake and Nicki yeah, up I'm there sorry, with but him. The and, dude who uh, does the 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 sex the delay button, uh, uh, he'd be working overtime. Yeah, the delay button would catch on fire. He'd be wore out. Lil Wayne would have to do all his hot boy stuff that didn't have cussing in it. Maybe he can bring BG out. I think yeah, the world would work. love that. Yeah. Do a whole hot boy at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Do, a hot do, a hot set. <laughs> do a hot boy set at the Super Bowl for halftime. Uh, make sure make sure the Cowboys are playing that year too. It have all the really same, piss them off. It have all the same white people that jumped out and started dancing Usher because yeah. it was their song. Hey, shout out the same thing. Shout, <laughs> I mean, he did have. Oh, he did. He's like, I gotta do OMG. Oh, he had to do that. <laughs> he had hey, to do that record. Shout out to Jackson State though, because their band was out there. That was Jackson State you, University. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Go ahead. We've talked, and this is one of the things that you always talk about, Mike, is 24-hour classics. Yes. People are donning this Usher performance as the greatest Super Bowl performance of all time. What? Is it too soon? Yeah. The thing about uh, it is yeah, he did too do soon. his thing. He, he did his thing. I ain't gonna front. He did a whole lot of stuff. But we must not forget Michael Jackson. And f- Prince in and the Prince rain. Prince in the rain when the when the Colts won the Super Bowl. Yep. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars was I'll with uh, Beyonce. Beyonce. I thought he did one by it himself. Was so good no, that I was you thought Beyonce. it was two of them. Yeah, man, and it was Bruno, really good. That was a really good. Bruno Mars killed. Uh, well, if it was, I don't care who it was with. I he's good. Bruno Mars is, his was no, good. He, yeah, he I can remember sing that. a little bit. Um, not alone. Twenty four. Yeah, this is definitely twenty four hour classic syndrome. Come on, man. Calm I give down, it top five. I, I mean, I don't even know if I. The thing is, because do we even? Because when Rihanna did hers, we were like, no, eh, thanks. I like, don't think I really liked Rihanna. No, song. I'm saying like we didn't no. have this syndrome with that because uh-huh. we didn't. It wasn't that great. It was cool. She was pregnant. She couldn't really do a whole lot. Well, but if you had said that, then we would have been in trouble for that. Well, I, I just said it. I think yeah. We did, so now we're about to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Twenty four hour classic syndrome, <laughs> long. That's what this is. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think it's. I think it's also different times too. You know, like this fast melody of everything. I mean, it's always kind of been a melody, but now it's like with a bazillion artists mm-hmm. at the same time too. Mm-hmm. But he did his thing. He was up there skating. This was the most watched. Dancing. This was the most watched Super Bowl. That's yeah. neat. so. Well, this is this is how quick, this how quickly things, I didn't watch it. How the quickly things move, you know. At my establishment, by the time I had the the video running, I was able to insert Usher's Super Bowl performance into the playlist because somebody had ripped it and put it on their own YouTube page. Mm-hmm. And they For were twenty four hours. No, it wasn't even twenty four hours. It's no, like, I mean until it gets taken down. No, but you know, yeah, yeah, that's right. Because like I, they did that for Dre. Um, and I put it up and like I tried to go to that later and they had their YouTube or I their think it was version of or it. the NFL put their they put yeah. their version up. So, yeah. you know, you can view it still, but it's nah. just crazy how like people got on and got those views together real quickly. They ain't getting no money. You no, know, no. I uh, might have. Uh, perhaps might have beat the system a little bit. Oh, you can you can get on there and catch a quick. 500,000 views real quick get a copyright strike but you still get all that money for all that views that works. oh, you, can, oh you, you can still keep it if you are monetized yep ah yeah but so, they can take it take your channel from you because you get a strike yeah but you, you need three, three strikes mm. so if you got a couple open and you know just throw so it you can just there. take an L get the soak up that 500 cash out and then just have two well, strikes there yeah. are people who do it with okay. um some of ESPN's content yeah because they'll post they're like, probably not monetized though. Who, BSPN? No, no, I'm saying like, so 
you have to have a channel. Uh, let me rephrase this as well really quick before you jump in. Okay. You also have to have, to be monetized, you have to have a channel that is also consistently your own stuff. Okay. So like you can't have an entire channel of rips and get a bunch of followers and get monetized. No, they won't monetize you. So they only monetize you off of your original content. Your original content. So Got if it. you have original content, then yes, you can get monetized. And then if you upload a video and then it's removed, you still get paid for that. Got it. But you can't just have like an entire channel of like ripping people's content and then they're not gonna they're not gonna monetize. I'm, I'm not gonna hold you. Sometimes when I'm at work, if I want to listen to a first take or I mean like Stephen A and Shannon or whatever. There's there's sites that have the full rips mm -hmm. on YouTube, but now I'm thinking about what you just said. So they just rip those every day, and they're not getting monetized. It's all that information. It's all rips. No, they have. No. I've, I've seen those. I've seen those you channels. You know what I'm talking about? But then this is the funny thing about because that's how that's how I watch Pardon the Interruption every day. <clears throat> yeah. Um, is I look up and then I'll say, okay, just rip like or three hours ago. So I'll yep. be like, okay, that's the one from the day. And then at the very end, and they'll cut out the commercials and everything. It's very, yep. very nice of them. But at the end, it'll be like, you know, an Asian woman doing ori origami. Yes. And I'm like, is, are, is this something that they're doing to get around this? You know, yep. I don't know what the, what the science is behind I've seen the same putting thing. your content directly after you've, uh, some ESPN content. Yeah. Yeah. So I was doing that too for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure it out, uh, trying to figure out the system. I mean, I studied the content ID system for about a year. You guys know that. Yeah. I was trying a whole lot of things and I, and, and yeah. to a degree, if you have stuff that is registered as a, has its own content ID, mm -hmm. If you have 500,000 people that tune in to watch Pardon the Interruption, well, if you have a content ID for this, Asian cooking thing, origami thing over here, there's two content IDs on there. So <laughs> even if this over here gets monetized by the original copyright holder, mm -hmm. which would be pardon the interruption or whatever, mm -hmm. there's another copyright on there for whoever this is. So every ad pays two things, oh. not one. Late dropping game on y'all right now. Got it, I'm got just it. saying. But YouTube cracks down on it. Um, and, they're consistently and even, changing their rules. And if you and if you have like I, I did it with like um, I was doing it with just my own music. So I would have like one of my songs out, and I would just take one of my songs that has content ID, and I would put it under a video or something, and it would just grab the content ID. Yeah. So I would get content ID on top of. And the thing is, is I wouldn't do it on like something like that. It would be yeah. something to where like it was edited a lot, and it like picked up. I don't, for example, like if I was doing, I was doing, redoing scores. Mm -hmm. So if I redid the score for in Bruges for the intro part, the Paramount or whoever is going to take all that money for my score because they have the visual copyright for that. Mm -hmm. So I would put my music at the end of it so that I could at least split the money with it because it's literally my score underneath it. That's okay. Game. But at the same time, they, they, they crack down on that stuff too, which like kind of sucks. I've, so. I, I've seen a lot of people just take a video, and I guess at one point this was working, and flip it. Yeah, that doesn't really work. And so like that <clears> Algorithms are way too good now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the boomerang thing that I did. I had the lines, and I had to yeah. distort it, and, and was, I, still... I even flipped it. I even flipped it uh, backwards. Nope. I'm going to have to watch. Caught the whole thing. I'm going to have to. You actually, it made, like as soon as the movie came on, on it was like, nope. It just blocked the entire thing. Mm. It blocked, it was like found copyright content for from a uh, minute, like one to 15. And it was only 15 minutes long. So, mm. you know. No, because I still get the notifications. Smart. When we were doing Take That Tuesday online and we would try to put some <laughs> of it on uh, Facebook. Yeah. And yeah. I'm still getting like part of this may be muted and it gives you a detailed breakdown yeah, of what's every country yep. and it says that's, that's every what it does country. for Instagram. Yeah. But for Facebook, it literally, it tells during uh metronomes mix, it'll say what he was playing yeah, and for how long. Doing that. And yep. I was yep. like, wow. That's why we actually on our YouTube channel, when Mike went live, when he was doing his thing, mm -hmm. we got a community guideline strike because of, a video that was just looping in the background. Mm -hmm. We can't even get rid of that, actually, that, that warning, which kind of sucks. But, yeah, it no, picks it up on live, too. Like, it'll pick it up live. Like, if we have a bunch of music playing in this live stream on Twitch, w when it's over, it will literally break get down. Get rid of it. Yeah, it'll block it, or it'll just say, hey, you got this music in there. And what's crazy is it YouTube will YouTube will 
the difference between YouTube and Twitch, YouTube will literally turn your stream off. Mm-hmm. Twitch won't. Same thing with like Facebook. Twitch won't. <clears throat> Twitch will keep it on, but then it'll block it afterwards. Yeah. Which no, is cool. like it used to be like, hey, you could watch it, um, you know, take that Tuesday, the TikTok's next day. the same way. Uh, and once they realized people weren't using it for video game content anymore, it was DJs. Yeah. Like, I guess the record companies got involved. And if we didn't download it immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it like, was going to be gone. It was, you know, and it would be, like, as soon as the show was over, they would have sections, complete sections muted out. Yeah, so mm-hmm. you have to do what we're doing. You have to, da- so we're literally recording. Yeah. So you have to record it <clears throat> as you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And then you have the copy. And when, um, when people start DJing on Instagram, this is the wild thing. There were certain songs where we were like, oh, maybe we should stay away from Prince and Michael Jackson mm-hmm. and Beyonce. I remember one night, uh, Nick played. I'll never forget. It was uh, Pat Benatar's "Love Is a Battlefield," and it like it turned his Instagram off. Oh yeah, and he couldn't get back on. Like, and I tried to go in. Like, I don't know because we both had both of ours on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, mine is a backup. Nope. Like, yeah, I would have mine up for Facebook and Instagram, and just watching both phones. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember Facebook would start shaking. The video would shake when it was about to go off. Mm-hmm. Oh, and for it'd real? Just be gone. And then you have to get back on there and do it again. The best places to live stream are Twitch and TikTok. Mm-hmm. TikTok does the same thing Twitch does. I literally was watching the end of the football game just because I was scrolling on TikTok and it was like, oh, overtime. And you, you can see it clear? I just watched the game. Yeah, ah. I, somebody was live streaming it. So I, I just watched the live stream. I want to get this. I want to get one more topic in if sure. we can, Lone. Um, and this is really in relation to a comment that Cardi B made about... Um, he's talking about basically balls. <laughs> uh, people ca- talking about how uh, hip hop is quote unquote stuck in a rut. You know, we've had that conversation. What's, that con- what's the title to that joint? What's it, this one? Herbie says hip hop isn't stuck in a rut. Fans just have buyer's, buyer's remorse. remorse. So she says people are saying this. I'm reading the quote. She says people keep saying like, oh, the state of hip hop is bad right now. Blah 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 blah. She said I don't think it's bad right now. I just think people don't know what they want. And then she's basically uh, she pointed she's pointing out she also pointed out the impact of social media and its influence on music musical tastes of creators and consumers. So that got me to thinking when we talk about the fans drive this and the fans drive that. Is it the traditional fan who's more powerful? Is it the traditional fan or is it the influencers, the Instagram? I don't want to say models, but you know what I mean when I say the influencers, the people that are on Twitter, the people that are on Instagram. Who has the power now? Is there is there is there an influence from everybody. those influencers? Is, every, <laughs> is everybody? It's algorithms, man. So it's the algorithms. The algorithms have the power. So they've replaced the power that that we would naturally tendency our tendency would be the fans. The fans drive this. The fans drive that. So now it's it's more of the algorithms. And no, it's more the of, fans and the algorithms. Oh, it's the, the fans and the fans, algorithms. It's the fans and, and the artists playing the algorithms because the algorithms push the algorithms. The algorithms <laughs> do not promote creativity. Uh, the algor- algorithms promote uh, what's paid for. What? W- w- well, it, it promotes. <laughs> there used to be a time like on let's say YouTube where mm. if you were super creative, YouTube would push that content. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, on every platform, it's just like, all right, you have to follow within these guidelines of the algorithm to get good. And so if you step outside of whatever that algorithm is, mm-hmm. you don't get pushed. So everybody knows what to make and what to create in that aspect. And so the content creators also know what hashtags to use and what people to talk about, which is going to then again push things to the top. If you have an entire content built around, I don't know, strictly underground music or strictly music you like, but they don't have big names, it's not going to reach more people. So people aren't going to do it. That's why I say it's the algorithms. The algorithm. So it, it is the algorithm. I think that's the root of it all. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, the fans are still. I mean, the people, fans, the people, people are are kind of responsible for how the alg- algorithm works. No, they're not, though. They are to a certain extent because when we're talking about what songs are very popular and what they're doing dances off of and what's what's catching on to people, these are people that are sitting back making these dances and these routines off of these songs. But to, what, to, but drive the to drive but, the algorithm? But why are they driving the algorithm? They're choosing those songs because that's what the algorithm will drive for their content. Mm. 
That's right. that's that's my argument at least. Is yeah. that they're doing it because they know that if I do a dance to this video, I can piggyback off of this thing that's already popping. They're not going to do a dance to something that I do. You know well, what I mean? sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> well, sometimes it doesn't work like that because it's like somebody makes this very creative dance mm-hmm. and then everybody sees it and they just want to do it too. I'm not even talking about the. It's kind of like even but... like how how the Jid song became super popular. Mm-hmm. The song that he did is a remix of Miss Fat Booty at the end of the day. Right. Right. And people somebody decided to hang a camera on a ceiling mm-hmm. and twerk essentially. Mm-hmm. That's what caught on and made that that song very popular. So it may be the algorithm and I don't think it isn't, but it also has something to do with the the person or the people on social media as well because they're the, they're the ones that are boosting it even further. Yeah, it's I think it's knowing how to play that algorithm Mm -hmm. um in that aspect i do think that the fans or the people doing that Mm -hmm. has a potential part of it but in general i think the the root cause of the way everything is moving right now is because we have a very much a it's just like we used to talk about how indiana we have very much people don't like things until other people like it oh yeah that is the entire culture of what this these algorithms are pushing right now if you happen to do a dance and all of a sudden it pops off, yeah. then a bazillion other people are going to do it as well. But it's like catching, you know, I don't know, catching a fart in a bottle. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's catch, I mean, just like, it's what it is. Because all of you is going to say lightning. But, you know, it'd be harder to catch a fart for real. Uh, <laughs> not that you catching catch lightning a, is easy. You catch a fart pretty easy. <laughs> <It's> people, <laughs> I, remember Terry said. It depends on. Yeah, well, I mean, because, yeah, that's people, right. Cause people, that's ice spice. He man, knows all about catching farts. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but I mean, just like recently, yes, lightning. Cheryl Lynn. With her song Encore started just it be, Oh, it's it, huge in Baltimore. It became new again. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it's just that's it, the people. What decide. song is this? Encore by Cheryl Lynn. Oh yeah, yeah. That's huge they for the Ravens. Footwork to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And um, but you know, sometimes and this is less about the algorithm than it is with playlists and what you know, when people push the button. But I remember when I told you when the the little Nas X song hit uh, what was that a month or so ago? About a month. And how when I turned on, you know, the, our music service, I'm not trying, I'm trying to, I'm not giving anybody any love. Thank the you. music service in my establishment uh, <laughs> that plays the top hits, if you will. And, 40 of them. Yeah. And so like, but you know, there's always things that they, they, they make a priority of when they come out. And that Friday and Saturday, I hit this hit, you know, just start. It's not random because that song was the first song that played on both of those nights. Yeah. But you paid for that. But also, you know, and they tried to, okay, we'll get this into the algorithm. But if the people don't want it. Yeah, they're going to reject it. You know, so the people didn't want that song. So you could put it at the top of these lists and you can try to try to do some things that are provocative to get people talking. But when they essentially don't want it, this you're not you're not they don't want it. Mm -hmm. The people are still are only going, you know, and it still speaks to both of your points. To where if the people don't want it, you can try to uh, uh, make a dance. You can try to put it at the top of these playlists and you can start to get a provocative visual. But if it doesn't slap in somebody's in somebody's circle, then, OK, you did all that. And that's great. But it's like on to the next one. Just like when True. it was time for, um, you know, when that, that Cardi and Meg song, you know, just taking it out of the realm because when we pick it on the, the the gay cowboy, we want to, you know, we'll just pick on women now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> when when that Bongo song didn't hit, yeah, it was on to the next one. And and, and whatever, <laughs> when they thought that was going to blow up, and it's probably push, push Cardi B's album back again because she needs to catch one before we can get excited about her music again, even though and it's that's probably why she's upset right now. Cause it, you know, here it is six, almost seven years later from her debut. It's like people, don't, people know her from her music because she's had songs that were huge, but it's almost getting to the point where Cardi B is a personality and a celebrity before she's an artist. You know, mm-hmm. it's funny that you say that because she won a Grammy and then hadn't put out a record since. The thing is, this is yeah, somebody but, else did that. But her this, name is uh, Lauren Hill. Well, oh, but this is the wild thing. But this is where Cardi's in a weird bag because she's had some incredible success with features. But then, of course, you know, WAP and Up were two number one Billboard songs and weren't on any album. It's almost like she never went anywhere 
despite the fact that she hasn't put an, out an album in six or seven years. It's a, it's a real unique case. Yeah, 100%. I'm just bringing it because that's where she, where she yep. that, that would take it back to maybe what she's trying to talk about. Yeah. In related in relation to her music. So what y'all are telling me is the fan is still important. It just it looks different in 2024 how things are you know I think recorded there, and I think there's less. I think the button pushing. Uh, I don't want to say it matters less, but it matters in a different type of way. Mm -hmm. And I think to some degree, I do think that they're. Because if one song doesn't work, you can just push the button on another song. You can. You know what I mean? And then see it if that works. Still might not work. True. Still might but not work. But I think True. even even the biggest artists, they only get so many button pushes before they're like, we're shelving this entire project. For sure. Yeah. They, they're over budget now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. But at the same time, everything's being played off the algorithm. So, yeah. I, honestly, I don't even remember what the original comment was about. Well, it was just, she said that, you know, people talk about how people keep saying, that the state of hip hop is bad right now, blah, 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 blah. He said, I don't think it's bad right now. I just feel like people just don't know what they want. And then in the second section, it says another factor she pointed out was the impact of social media and its influence on the musical tastes of creators and consumers alike. And the thing about that is, is social media pretty much spearheaded her career, though. She says, I feel like social media is running too much. So I feel like, just keep doing you it's and F, not, what, what, F what people got to say. It's just not working in her favor now. So she's, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you she, see what I'm saying? She, she's essentially talking about the algorithm. Okay. I mean, that's essentially what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean. I mean, make adjustments. Fan, fan, <laughs> fans don't know what they want because social media makes it too complicated to know what they want. That's, I mean, that's, 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 that's pretty that's much the algorithm. Yeah, that's the algorithm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I, mean that's, I knew you, I knew you would. I knew the algorithm was going to come up because I know you study that stuff. Like I know that show. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there, there, it's uh, with she everything. She doesn't have another WAP. That's all it is. True. Is that what what, what basically brought out? If she, look, if she had, time. if she had another WAP or she had an up, a new one right now that. It, let's just keep it real. If she had something that could compete right now with these sexy red records, mm -hmm. oh man, then she she wouldn't Are be. They still going that bar on? is yes. low. Really. Very, that's a low bar. That's a low bar. I mean, bar. but right now when uh, Cardi make way better music than that. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, well, right so now, did, that's, so did uh, Nicki Minaj. Nicki didn't win nothing. Well, yeah, you got me. I to see what the Grammys look like next year <laughs> with the uh, uh, success of Sexy Red. She gonna get nominated. Oh no, she, they didn't nominate. Like she, they she was in that window and they didn't nominate her for anything. Oh, good. <laughs> she should have been honestly no made she it. no 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 we no. made it we is, made it man <laughs> yeah no we don't we uh, i'm sorry but i just in general uh, no hey y'all felt <laughs> hey y'all felt alone on that good though i swear yeah, i did no, i, I did not want to see her on the the red carpet you, you can't give killer mike the grammy one year and then nominate sexy red the next year for, the, for the butthole so they'll do you it. can't do that they'll, they'll do, do it. it next year fart will be nominated yeah it probably will yeah that's a real thing, isn't it? It is. But she's gonna shake her ass in the deli. <laughs> so I was the person that said, I actually <laughs> said on the show, I said she is maximizing that fifteen no, we don't have minutes. To talk about her no more. All right, well, yeah, yeah it's yeah. past fifteen. That's shouts all I'm gonna to, say. I, I say shouts to Sky Zoo. I think he start he started start his own first generation rich, first generation rich music label. That's yeah. kind of cool. He's gonna start roll. He said he's going to, I think, roll out an artist every two. His first well, one's a poet. Yeah, I saw that. Jay Rose. Yeah, but good for him. Yeah, that's dope. I, yeah, th I think it, he'd do a good job of curating. So it shows how long we've been involved with or around music because Sky Zoo's a person that we've seen his entire career, mm -hmm. all the way Ill Mind and Knife mm -hmm. One, all the way up to now. And now that he's getting his own situation and you know helping others, I think that's dope. That's what it's about. Each one teach one. When you get in that position, and like I, I agree with you 100 percent, Long. He definitely will be a good uh, curator yeah. of talent. Got a good ear. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you gentlemen would like to say prior to us? Keep your money in your pocket this week. This weekend. All right. All right. Uh, that forty dollars ain't gonna get you very far. Not far at all. Yeah, might so, get you uh, parking. <laughs> good luck with that. You better Uber or Lyft, and you better have some surge money. No, but everyone, please be safe um, as you come to Indianapolis, or if you already are in Indianapolis for All Star Weekend, keep your wits about you, don't and be don't spend money you don't have. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and uh, try to imp impress people you don't know who don't care anything about you. And when I, you go to the club, Dante can't let you in. Yeah, all right. Fonte might be able to. Fonte might be able but, to. Uh, I see what you did there. Dante's yeah. not letting you in. I don't care if you saw him yesterday. But if you do have some extra money, you can support the New Old Heads Patreon. Exactly. Yes. 
Yeah, exactly. So do that. We so would and appreciate you could, it. And you could get the um, uncut version of the show, which is yes. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what we had some fun. A good version. Shout out to the chat. If you're still in there, we appreciate you. If you're lurking, we appreciate you as well. Uh, new, new dot com for all the education you need this year. If you see it, like it, subscribe, share, ring the bell, pass it along. Uh, Give us a positive vote positive. On, uh, on like that Spotify app or that iTunes app if you're listening. Yes, we need those re- reviews. So run those, run the reviews up. Five stars. We appreciate that support as well. Anything less, you just hating. <laughs> <laughs> those reviews are very important, y'all. So if you get a chance, just you know, get get you get your boys a paragraph or so and get some stars up there. We really would appreciate that. All right, we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Yeah. Bye.